In the last half hour, police have confirmed they've met with BBC bosses to discuss the sex picture scandal, but no criminal investigation is yet underway. The Met say they're assessing the evidence after allegations that a top presenter at the company paid a teenager £35,000 for explicit images. The youngster's family say they wrote to the BBC to complain in May, but the presenter was only taken off air last Friday. Joining me now is our correspondent Oliver whitfield Mircic, who's at New Broadcasting House in central London, and also Professor Akhil Ahmed, who's former head of religion at the BBC and Channel 4. Thank you both very much for joining me. Oli, will you set the scene for us? You're at the BBC. What's been going on today? Yes, that's right. So representatives from the BBC had been meeting with the Metropolitan Police's Specialist Crime Command virtually earlier on this morning. Now, we knew this was going to be taking place because the BBC announced it in a statement yesterday. The Metropolitan Police saying there is no investigation at this time, but that officers are assessing the information discussed at the meeting and further inquiries are taking place to establish whether there is evidence of a criminal offence being committed. Now, we've been reporting on this story for the past three days and what might be quite confusing for viewers and for listeners is that the presenter in this case has not been named. And there are two reasons for that. First of all, because of privacy, this person has got the reasonable right and expectation of privacy. Even if that person were to be arrested, it would only be when they got charged that we would find out that way. The other reason that we are unable to name this person is because of defamation laws in the UK. Anything that is published, which is likely to uh, lead to this person's reputation being seen as less than what it was before, would then be defamatory. It would leave media organisations liable for quite expensive lawsuits. But it is not just the media, it is also people online. And there's been vast speculation over the course of this weekend because the BBC is yet to name this person, the police have been yet to name this person, and the person involved has yet to identify themselves. Now, that means that a lot of other BBC presenters have been wrongly accused. Some of them have threatened legal action. And that applies to everybody on social media. Even if you do not publish the tweet, even if you repost it, you could still potentially be sued for that. All the while, the BBC is facing one of its biggest crises since the Jimmy Savile scandal. The BBC has yet to put out any updated statement today. Talk TV has gone to them with very detailed questions about who knew what and when, about why it took so long for a full investigation to be launched, whether they reached out to the family when the first complaint was made. The BBC so far says that they have no further details to add. Meantime, the political pressure is also being mounted on the BBC with politicians from all sides of the aisle asking what is happening with the BBC's investigation. The Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, says that there needs to be more transparency in that investigation. The Prime Minister's spokesman says that the Prime Minister does have full confidence in the BBC Director General Tim Davey. There are, though, accusations that Tim Davey has been somewhat hypocritical when it comes to the suspension here in this case, the BBC presenter, we were told over the weekend, being put on leave during the, uh, during the Gary Lineker uh, drama that happened only a few months ago. Gary Lineker was put on suspension straight away. In this case, it looks like it's taken the BBC around six weeks for the presenter to be put on leave. So a lot of different strands to this story. We still do not have that identification that we are able to reveal, and now we've got the police saying that further inquiries will be made, but as it stands, there is no investigation. And let's just specify, Ollie, why this is a scandal, why this is potentially a big deal, why the BBC is being summoned and cross-examined in this way, why we're covering it, why it's front page of the papers. Because it involves a household name, we believe, BBC presenter, but at the moment, all we know really is that these are allegations. Nothing has been proven at all. Um, the, the, the presenter concerned has not been arrested yet or charged with anything at all. So why is the BBC engulfed and admired in all of this scandal and, and, and scrutiny and controversy when really this might amount to nothing more than a hill of beans? 
Well, there are two elements to that. First of all, the presenter, there is no insinuation that any criminal act has happened because the age of consent in the UK is 16. However, under various different bits of legislation, a person is considered a child until they are 18 for the purposes of sending explicit pictures. And the person receiving those explicit pictures, if they're under 18, could, and I expl I'm repeating there, could then be found to have committed a criminal offence, but there has been no criminal offence found so far. So that is one reason why this is a story. The second reason is because it seems that the BBC received this complaint in May. They've then allowed this presenter to continue in his presenting duties for up to six weeks. And then once the Sun newspaper got in touch with them, that's when the BBC says that new information came to light. And so that is why they're then taking their subsequent action of suspending this presenter. So it's a dual track. And also, you've got to remember, the BBC is funded by taxpayers. It is one of our greatest, biggest institutions. But also, that comes with it quite a lot of demands when it comes to being held to account. Ollie, thank you very much indeed. Let's go to Akhil Ahmed, former head of religion at the BBC and Channel 4. What do you see as the real kernel of the controversy here? What is the core of the issue? What's the problem? Because this can't be said to be something the BBC has been sitting on for 10 years or 20 years. I don't suppose, at least at any rate, it can be said to be something that all this presenter's colleagues knew about and was common knowledge and everybody was aware of it. I know they always say that that was true of Jimmy Savile and say, say it of... of of many other, um, you know, uh, scandal admired um, celebrities. Oh, everybody knew, everybody knew. But when it boils down to it, very often people didn't know at all. Somebody might have gossiped. There might have been a rumor. Doesn't mean you know. It just means people are, you know, speaking tat tittle tattle that you can't act upon because you don't know if it's true or not. So in this instance, if the BBC was only told in May, it's only the beginning of July now. The BBC can't be accused, can it, of having turned its back on something potentially illegal or dangerous for very long at any rate? Well, I think it's trial by social media, isn't it? That's the problem. I think people are commenting on this and and, and, and making all sorts of allegations and, and just generally don't understand the concept of, you know, you can't make decisions based on one source you have to investigate things you have to get to the bottom of it now there may be when we know a little bit more there may be an issue about the, the the gap between may and july but the fact is if the bbc say that they didn't have enough information to do something until last week then you have to accept that accept that at this stage and of course then there'll be an investigation into their conduct and the whole thing and then we'll know more but i think what this is is actually it's just a perfect storm it's a it's allegations against a household name it's uh, uh, who we don't know who it is. So there's a bit of a who done it there. Then there's the allegations which involve a, uh, a seventeen somebody who was seventeen at the time, sexual explicit photographs, some money. Uh, you know, it's it's and it's the BBC. It just feels like it, there's a lot a lot of interest, but I'm not sure that actually anybody's being fair really, which is because. Because you have to have due process and due process has to work for everybody. I thought Oliver summed it up really well in the sense that what can the BBC have done? They can't just sack somebody without actually investigating something. That investigation has to take place. You know, I can understand what all of the interest is, but actually it's unfair some of the kind of treatment that I think people are getting, whether they're presenters, you know, some of them friends of mine, or if you're some of the BBC management because nobody knows if they've done anything wrong yet and that i think that's the key i think I there's suppose, been so I much Akil, jumping will, not, not from you but jumping Akil. on social media i think that's that's delivered it but I suppose what you could say is that the newspaper here is doing a great deal of the work. So when you say this needs to be investigated, you could say, well, it has been investigated, particularly by the Sun newspaper. It's their story. Well, they've primarily. not named it. But they've pardon? not named him, have they? What? They've not named the individual. They the haven't yet. They, they haven't yet. I think evidence. they're on the verge. But they don't. They didn't have enough evidence, or they've not had enough evidence up to now to actually name the individual, which tells you something that actually there's more evidence is needed, more investigation is needed. Well, it's said that that's, that's the basic in journalism. It's said that there are pictures, and it's said that the person concerned didn't even really seek to cover his or her identity, and that it's very plain to all that you know who the person is because there are actual pictures and also 
payments made into bank accounts and that the person didn't really take any steps at all to cover his or her identity whatsoever and it's all very clear. I mean, it's not as if, you know, it's just one person from somebody's family saying this has happened to our kid. This has come via a newspaper, a newspaper with access to all kinds of lawyers to make sure that the newspaper doesn't get sued for saying something it can't say. So you might say the BBC is presented with a dossier of information collated and compiled and vetted by the Sun newspaper and the Sun's lawyers. That's what the BBC is given to, to, to examine and scrutinise and act upon. It's not nothing. It's not just a letter, an but, anonymous but tip-off letter from a stranger, is it? But that's the investigation that they say they've been running since, and, hen and hence the suspension. But we don't know as well as, I think, as Oliver mentioned, we don't necessarily know that any laws have been broken yet. So it's all very well saying this happened and this has happened and it's, in, and it's not appropriate, et cetera, et cetera. But the fact of the matter is, if there's no law being broke, then what can, what can any management do? Hence, that's why the, that is why the Sun have not named him up to now. Well, I'm not because... sure that I'm not I'm not sure that's the case at all. Having worked for the BBC for the best part of 30 years, on and off, mostly on, hardly ever off, actually. Um, I don't think that's true. In 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 your contract as a BBC presenter, at any rate, and I had quite a few of those over years and years and years. It says that you're not allowed to, you're not permitted in your contract to bring the BBC into any kind of disrepute. Into disrepute and that doesn't, yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean breaking the law. It means behaving in a way that causes embarrassment, humiliation, it, undue it, scrutiny. That's, that's exactly right, which is why we don't know what was, I don't know what was said in May exactly. And I don't know what was done then. What I do know is that actually they've acted upon some evidence that they've seen since in the last week. But of course, you're completely correct. The, the, a decision has been made by some people with regards to whether or not the what, the information they were given in May was a pro, would have been appropriate enough for somebody to have been suspended at that time. You're completely correct about about bringing the BBC into distribute. That applies to all staff. So once they felt that threshold has been crossed, they have acted, and an investigation will take place for what happens going further on. I just think it's a very difficult place to be in. Very, very difficult because if you, you have to investigate an allegation, but if the allegations have ramped up between May and July, then you can only act on what you think is an appropriate measure once you've crossed the threshold. It's not me condoning what the BBC have done, or it's not me even saying that they've got it right. I'm just simply saying, I think we need to know exactly what's happened because you can't just name somebody and ruin someone's career without knowing full well what you have actually, and if they have in fact broken the law. It's it said, though, that BBC chiefs, whatever that might mean, department bosses, yeah. you know, heads of something or other. Uh, there's a, yeah, after all, we know there's a very densely populated management layer at the BBC that licence fee payers might not be so keen to be funding as they end up doing involuntarily. But there's a very rich seam of management to mine. But it's said that management parted with the individual after the BBC had been tipped off about this. Um, so you just wonder whether, you know, due seriousness and due attention was paid to the alert. You also wonder whether there's a certain stratosphere of BBC presenter, the big guns, the really huge names, the big box office, who somehow lead a different life along a primrose path, aren't held to account in the same way as lesser presenters or BBC staff mm -hmm. who are kind of cosseted and protected by BBC management rather than brought to account, taken to task, suspended, if it looks as if there's an in, in indication that this ought to be done. After all, you know, if you're alerted to something, doesn't a suspension doesn't mean that you think the person's guilty of it. It means that you're suspending them from work while you check it out. So that could have been an immediate response rather than a very delayed response, couldn't it? Again, we don't. I, I actually agree with a lot of what you said there, but I'm just. I just simply keep going back to that point, Vanessa, which is I agree with so much of that. But you can't just go around suspending people without investigating something. And if they felt they didn't have enough in May, then they have to make a decision based on that. They could be wrong. They could completely be wrong. Professor, but the fact thank of the matter, you, so you still much. have thank to you make very a decision. Thank you very much for joining me. Appreciate it.